apologise if there's a funny smell. I've taken my shoes off for this. <clears throat> Can I ask, has anyone ever done a martial arts taster session? Has anyone ever stuck around long enough to do a grading and get their first belt? Has anyone stuck around long enough to get a black belt? So it's, it's hard. It's the same when you come to Toastmasters and you do public speaking. In Toastmasters, less than 1% will get an advanced education award. Again, in martial arts, less than 1% of people who step through a club door will achieve their black belt. I have a second dan black belt in WQF Taekwondo. But it wasn't really until I started doing Jiu Jitsu did it open my eyes to all the different types of martial arts there are out there. Now there's a saying that a fight starts stood up, but usually ends up on the floor. So you can break the martial arts down into different categories based on this. So we could start with one being stood up, and that's the, the standing or the striking art. So you've got boxing, you've got kickboxing, taekwondo, thai boxing, another popular one. Then we've got the next set, which is the transition from being stood up to going down to the floor. This is throwing and takedowns and sweeps. So it's probably wrestling and judo. And the next one, you'd be looking at running around the floor, grappling. And you're typically looking at wrestling and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You can also look at the arts that look at weapons like kendo, but we're not gonna. But tonight we're gonna look at the standing arts. And I'm specifically gonna talk about the physical, mental, and emotional side of training in martial arts. So this is the physical side. When we do the physical side, we, we learn about physics, biomechanics, and anatomy. So for instance, if I was to do a roundhouse kick, which comes around this way, okay? If I leave my bottom foot pointing this way, I can't kick very well. It goes against the motion of my knee. If I turn my foot out this way, it opens up my hips, and I've got full range of motion, okay? Then, if I'm worried about getting hit, I might lean back as I kick. But where's my weight going? This way. So I'm only really hitting with my leg. And say my leg weighs two stone. However, however if I move forward and use my weight into the kick, I'm going to hit with all my weight. So I'm going to hit with 12 stone. What would you prefer if you're going to be hit? 12 stone or two stone? There's a big difference. Then we also learn about anatomy. Which part of my foot or leg am I going to kick with and what's my target going to be? Now this is where I need a victim, I mean assistant. <laughs> did you volunteer earlier, Simon? Okay, yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put your hand up when you said you've done a taster session. So have you done a, a fighting stance? Mm -hmm. Put your hands up. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing a roundhouse kick that I mentioned earlier, around this way, I could use the top of my foot, yeah? But the problem is it's got loads of little bones in, so I could quite easily break it. So I have to hit soft, squishy bits, so I don't hurt myself. So one, <laughs> but there's always targets there. Yeah. <laughs> You've got the inside of the leg here, and the femoral artery runs down it. Now you can slap it. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna take him out of the fight, but it's gonna upset him. He doesn't really wanna be there anymore. Next, we've got the liver. I could strive. Come around this way. Yeah? <laughs> now if, you watch a, if you watch a boxing match and anyone gets hit properly with a liver shot, that's it. They'll put their hand up and they'll quit. They don't want to fight anymore. Other options are, if I'm going to hit something harder, I could use my shin, the bottom of my shin. I could still hit the same targets this way, come through here, or liver. <laughs> but I can also go to the outside of the leg. So down here runs the iliotibial band this way. It's like, do you remember at school where you used to get a dead leg? Mm. It's the exact same thing, but I'm going to do it repeatedly. <laughs> so that's the physical side. Now the mental side is more like the strategy. And it's like chess. There's normally like an objective, a strategy, and tactics that you use. So in stand-up arts, the, my main objective is going to be to knock Simon out. Options for knocking him out are a strike to the head or the neck, a choke, or a strangle. But for, if we're doing standard parts, it's going to be a strike to the head or the neck. To do that, I need to be in range. He's got this up, so I need to remove his defences. 
And I've also got to worry about him hitting me. So I've got to destroy his weapons. Okay? So my ability to get in and out of range is I've got to use <coughs> footwork. And you'll see lots of boxers working on it in the gym. I've got to be able to move forward, get into range to hit him, and get back out again. But do it in such a way that I am balanced and I don't lose the ability to be able to punch with either hand or kick with either foot at any time. Next, if I'm going to go in and hit him, I probably want to destroy some of his weapons. Now he's a bit taller than me and he's got to reach. So if I'm going in, he's probably going to throw his jab. Okay? Now instead of trying to break his arm, when you jab, a lot of your weight goes on your front leg. So I'm going to destroy his front leg first. Like we had, we had the slap, yeah, we had the kick around the iliotibial band. So I'm going to repeatedly do this till he gets to the point where he's like, <coughs> I can't put any weight on it anymore. Then he can't punch anymore. At that point, when he can't punch us anymore, I'll throw this. Then I'll throw the liver shot. And as the liver shot comes in and you feel pain, your hands drop to the pain. What's left open? His head. <laughs> Destroyed his weapons. Shot to the liver. Removes his defences. And he's wide open. <laughs> yeah. Nice hit to the jaw to knock him out. Lovely. <laughs> Next, the emotional side. So the human body's got, what, three basic responses? Fight, flight, and freeze. Yeah? Now, we're friends, we've hugged, we've no. shaken hands, you know, we haven't shared a room yet, or anything, <laughs> but, you know, we've been each other's comfortable, but if I change my posture, and change how I look at him, and furrow my brow, and I walk up to him, and he knows he's not sure what's going to happen, there's a point where well, you start there, <laughs> he feels very uncomfortable. So you've got a, you've got a comfort zone. And you can, your body will respond with a flicker of the eyes when you step into that comfort zone. And for Simon, where was it again? I think it was about there, where you just started to feel a little uncomfortable. That's when your flight response kicks in. So in martial arts will practice pressure training with pads. And if you're going to, you know, if you're doing sparring, you're going to get hit as well. So you get used to being pressured into that comfort zone. You're also going to get freeze. Freeze will happen when you get punched in the face. Everyone's going to plan until they get punched in the face. But as soon as you get bop on the nose, you freeze. You panic. You don't know what to do. So we work on that in sparring as well. You have to get used to getting hit and trying to stay in the fight. We also encourage the use of positive emotions when you're fighting. So we, want, we don't want anger, we want controlled aggression. Yeah? So I need to stay in and come out, move to the side. And if I'm going to hit, it's not a tap. It's not. <laughs> it's good. If I'm going to hit him, I'm going to hit him. Yeah? So we have to practice controlled aggression. You can also talk about the social and the spiritual sides of martial arts. But actually, for martial arts and public speaking are big parts of my life, and actually there's maybe not that much difference to what you think. If you're doing public speaking, you also have to work on the physical side. You have the stagecraft, the moving around the stage. You have the body gestures, how to use the hands, the facial expressions. We've got the vocal variety. How loud you speak, how quickly you speak, how high or low. We also have the mental side. Well, what's the purpose of this speech? What's the takeaway? How am I going to structure it? What language am I going to use? Then we have the emotional side. A lot of you have come here today because you're afraid of speaking. You've got a flight response. If you have to prepare a speech and get up, you're going to have to face that flight response and get up and give that speech anyway. We can also practice working against the freeze response in table topics. We're going to put you under pressure. You don't know what you're going to say and see whether you panic and fail. And equally, as you get further on in speaking, we'll encourage you to use other emotions, positive emotions, and be emotional in how you get across. So, before you came in here, 
I was expecting not a lot of you to know much about martial arts, but quite a few of you as members would probably know quite a bit about public speaking. And maybe there's not such a big difference after all. Now it tells my story.